Hey, here's a, a video response to uh, How To Mechatronics. He's got a great channel that you ought to check out. And he built his very own uh, first plane and flew it with his RC controller that he also designed and built himself. And in the video, he asked for some comments from people who had some experience with, with uh, aero modeling and flying. So I thought I'd just respond to him. So first off, well, you did a great job. First time out, give yourself an A+. Plus. You asked about some construction hints. I'm going to base these comments on a plane that's pretty similar to yours. This was actually the first plane that I built about 10 years ago. It's a model called the Blue Baby. The key thing is you want to make it as light as possible. This one is constructed, they call it the monobody construction, the internal foam is made from just this kind of uh, one-inch insulation. It's an interesting thing. If you live in a cold area, you have a lot of flexibility. It looks like you might live in kind of a warm area where there's less availability of insulation. But I think this will work pretty well for your cutter. It's kind of the same idea. You can see, of course, I just hand cut this, but you can see the body is all cut from the one inch insulation and then it's coated with this uh, oh I don't know maybe like a couple of mm thick insulation and also the wing and then that is used as the kind of the mold for that shape but you can still uh, use I, I would look into using this kind of uh, pink foam or some kind of other thicker foam that's still pretty light but you'll find it a lot stronger than the styrofoam that you had. Uh, I would trim out the back area where I think you had it solid. You can see that solid area. I would trim out kind of a hole in the back just to lose some weight. And because you have an awesome uh, machine, you should turn, turn the thing sideways and then you can see you can trim down to the tail and narrow the entire body. I think that'll work out pretty well aerodynamically and save you some weight. Uh, for glue, you might not want to use uh, epoxy. It's, it's probably not too bad, but if you use uh, Uhu Pour, P-O-R glue, or foam tack, or foaming P-U glue. In America, it's called Gorilla Glue. Uh, that works pretty well, and it's uh, nice and light. Okay, definitely don't use aluminum in your construction. You can see here, all I did was glue on uh, like a piece of plywood, and this is actually even a lot thicker than it needs to be, but that gives you like a perfect base for screwing things on. I've got just a plastic commercial motor mount but you can imagine like right there where my thumb is, I could have just glued in like another piece of plywood and that would have been a perfect uh, place to screw uh, the motor onto. That'll save you uh, quite a bit of weight. Let's see, or, uh, oh, for your wheels. Um, okay, this is using commercial wheels. I think your wheels are fine. You might make, make them a little bit thinner, but you might put them on wire and not the, the flat aluminum. This is pretty uh, pretty lightweight, but you know the plane's not that heavy, and it seems to work fine. Let's see. For the wing, you might consider doing a three-channel, what they call an RET, rudder elevator throttle, and not have the ailerons. Instead, you can see this wing has some dihedral, so what happens is when you turn the plane, it'll pitch like that, and then it'll kind of roll around. Uh, number one, it makes the plane a lot more stable for beginners. Like if you just let go of the stick, it'll, it'll find its own level position again, and it's a lot easier to fly. Uh, this wing is under cambered. You can see here, this is nice because it really uh, slows the plane down. And when you're a beginner, slower is better because it gives you a bit more time to respond. You can see here I didn't have to really uh, reinforce it much. 
except for, I think this is a carbon rod, but you could do the same thing with uh, just a, uh, a wooden stick across the front uh, for to give you the strength on the front end. So you might uh, try that. Uh, another thing that you can do for strengthening the wing, <clears throat> if you look here at this plane, what I've done here, this is just uh, foam, I think 9mm foam. And then what I've done is I've taken packing straps and literally I just went up to the local Ikea store and pulled these out of the trash where people were throwing them away after they were unpacking their Ikea boxes. And what you do is you glue it on top and on bottom and it makes a really super, super strong. You can see it here. That's just a really strong, rigid surface that'll hold up to a lot of crashes, keep its strength, and that might work out pr uh, pretty well for you. Okay, definitely on the battery, I would consider using a smaller battery. I think you mentioned you might have been using like a 2100 or 2200 milliamp hour. And for this plane, I fly with a 500 milliamp hour. And I think, I think I weighed these. This is like 170 grams, and this one is just uh, 50 grams. This will really uh, save you a lot of weight, which will help slow you down and just keep you in the air. Uh, you might want to move. I noticed you had the servos back almost to your uh, rear control surfaces. That's a little bit of a problem because it makes it harder to get your good center of gravity. Of course, you want your center of gravity to be, to be at about 25% of the wing. And if you move your servos forward, it's a lot easier to achieve that. And what I did, I uh, used the thinnest wire that you can find, the thinnest piano wire. And you don't have to worry about it being flexible. You can just put it in some coffee stirring sticks like that to give it a tube and uh, then just like glue that on with just the very slightest amount. I think that's hot glue there uh, to keep the weight down. Uh, the other thing you can do if you can't if you can't find the plastic uh, stirring sticks, maybe all your local places use uh, you know the wood stirring sticks is just take a zip tie and run it all the way through like that. And then your, uh, your wire will run through this way and then just cut it off this part. And then this part glues into the foam of your airplane body. Um, oh, one other thing. It would be so awesome if you made a version of your remote controller that took just one of the commercial gimbals. I think this is only like 10, 15 bucks. Uh, but of course it's got, you know, the real RC, uh, kind of uh, control style that's nice. And this would be so, so neat to have like a, like a custom, uh, radio of your own with these really nice, uh, gimbals. Anyways, I look forward so much to seeing, uh, your second, uh, your second build. I mean, you, you did such a great job on your first. I think your second one is going to do great. I hope uh, this was some useful information for you and look forward to uh, seeing you in the air again.